it is Esther here, and first of all, I just wanted to say I'm sorry that I'm trash at uploading. Um, I said in my last video that I was going to keep uh, regularly uploading on this channel, but last night, no joke, I was watching like all the high school musical movies with my younger brother, and I totally forgot to make a video. Um, plus, I've been busy all week with mock exams, so that's fun. Instead of revising for my exams, I just watched like a shit ton of movies, and I'm going to review some of them talk about some of them, do some possible theory videos, you know, I'm just gonna have a lot of fun really. But anyway, today I decided to make a, a video about one of my new favourite films of all time, Minority Report. Oh my fucking god. If you don't know me in real life, you won't know how fucking obsessed I am with Colin Farrell, like, not in a weird way, but you know, I just love like almost every movie he's ever been in, and it's like my life goal to watch all of them. So I decided to hit up Minority Report. You know, I've always known of this film's existence. I mean, it's legit the same age as me. Like, it came out July 2002, and I was born November 2002. Like, my mum was probably pregnant with me watching this movie, so it's just fate, you know? <laughs> um. But I've always kind of just ignored it. Like, it's one of those films that you always see on DVD in charity shops or CEX. But it's just such an amazing film that I really think it needs more love. Now, that's not to say it's underrated, because it really isn't. It was directed by Steven fucking Spielberg, for goodness sake. And it has 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. I know I just said tomatoes and I'm British, but it just sounds better, okay? Um, now, I know that Russian tomatoes, tomatoes, whatever the fuck, doesn't really matter. I think that the fact that it's critically acclaimed, and also the audience score is like 80%, shows that this movie is top quality. Like, M Minority Report is that bitch. I watched this film on Monday, and by Tuesday I was already changing my lock screen to Danny Whitwer. On Wednesday I watched it again, and now I can fully say it's up there with my favourite films. And I usually don't like movies like this, for example, like, crime, or action, or sci-fi, or whatever. Like, my favourite movies are just, like, weird shit, or horror, or, like, Wes Anderson. And then I watched this, and I died. <laughs> um, but it was absolutely amazing. If you haven't seen it yet... Here's a little rundown of the plot. It takes place in the future, like most sci-fi-esque films do, and it follows Detective John Anderton, head of the pre-crime division of Washington, D.C. Uh, the pre-crime project is made up of three people known as precognitives, or precogs for short, who can see a murder before it happens. The police force uses these precogs to catch criminals before they commit a crime, and have been for several years until one day, John himself is predicted to commit a murder of a man he's never met. For the rest of the film, John investigates the case himself, while also being on the run, and being pursued by Danny Whitwer, played by you-know-who, a Department of Justice agent who was hired to watch over the the pre-crime unit. So he's like a school inspector, but for the police, and you know, hotter. So now you know the basic plot, let's get to why it's one of my favourites. Warning, spoilers ahead. First of all, the fight scene in the car factory. <laughs> this scene is so damn good. It's just, it has so many great moments from Danny swiping the blood from his face. That was just so, like, dramatic. Um, to both John and Danny fighting in a car while it's being made on top of them. It's just so brilliant. And it was transitioned into well from the first chase scene by Danny hitting John with a car door. Second, Agatha's acting. Agatha, one of the precogs, was brilliant in this film. She's basically like the main precog and without her the other two can't function. As the technician says, they're a hive mind. Just just that scene in the hotel where she whispers to John and that gut-wrenching scream she lets out after he shoots Leo Crow, she's just amazing. Also, while researching this video, I found out she played fucking Mary Lou Barebone in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which also had Colin Farrell in it. Sorry that's very random, but like, I was shooketh when I saw it. Number three, Danny Whitwer and his death. Easy. Easy. Seems I found a flaw. 
talking about Colin Farrell, let's get to the main reason I watched this film in the first place. He's in it, and he's amazing, as usual. His character, Danny Whitworth, is an agent sent by the higher-ups in the police to watch over John Anderton and the rest of the pre-crime unit. We find out that he used to be a homicide detective, he's heavily religious, as shown by the rosary he kisses at the start of the fight in the car factory, and before his death, and that his father was murdered. I was shot and killed when I was 15 on the steps of our church in Dublin. Which probably convinced him into becoming a homicide detective. In the beginning of the film, we see him as an antagonist because he's very cocky and kind of gets in the way of the characters and John definitely does not like him. However, this is a red herring for the real villain. He offers John gum immediately after he calls him a twink, which shows that he really doesn't give a shit about how people view him. Investigator from the feds here. Yeah, I don't need some twink from the fed poking around right now. Danny Whitworth, twink from the fed. Oops, gum. Because he is just the the man you know he's just the guy <laughs> that doesn't make sense he's like you know he's just that bitch I, I used that phrase already but he is that bitch sorry i also love how even after he gets shot he's still laughing because he was given a job and he fucking did it so his purpose has essentially been filled plus he's just the cutest little bean i mean look at him adorable and loki looks like brendan yuri in but it's better if you do now I'm of consenting age. Four, the pre-crime process. This film begins with the process of the, um, the detectives figuring out a pre-crime. There's no narration, nothing is shoved down our throats, it's just a perfectly executed sequence of Tom Cruise being an absolute ledge at detecting. Is that a thing? I mean, I know detecting is a word, but can you use it in reference to detectives? I'm not sure. Plus the classical music and the entrance of Danny just make it one of the best opening scenes I've ever seen. Get it? I said scene twice. Oh my god. Number five, the hotel scene. Another brilliant scene is the one in the hotel, the murder that the pre predicted. John is about to kill Leo Crow, who he has been led to believe killed his son, and due to Agatha's whisperings of, you can choose, he stops and instead reads out his rights, the ones that you get told when you get arrested. For example, you have a right to a lawyer, and blah blah blah, I don't really know because I'm not American. His voice is a horse from crying, and it's so impactful, and it only gets more dramatic once he shoots Leo, and Agatha lets out that scream I mentioned earlier. The final one, number six, the cops don't use guns. A random little note to end this video on is the use of strange weapons by the police. I thought that this was... I thought that this was very interesting, as they mentioned in the movie there hasn't been a murder in Washington for six years due to pre-crime, so the police don't really need to bother using firearms. Instead, instead they have things like six sticks, <laughs> which literally make someone puke when it touches them, and these super cool like shockwave guns that just throw people across the room. <laughs> Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is by far not the entire list of think of like reasons why I love this movie. I could go on and on, you know, from like the scene where uh, John and Agatha are in the shopping mall and she's like predicting everything that's gonna happen, or the scene where John gets his eyes like taken out. And there are so many good lines in this movie. Please tell me. Um, if you want me to make a best lines video like I did with In Bruges uh, because I absolutely loved making that and I'm also going to be making a Moonrise Kingdom one soon which is also one of my favourite films so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you watch through the spoilers without seeing the film yet I highly recommend you do go watch it also if you're a big fan of Danny Whitworth like me then I recommend watching this really cool fan edit that I found the other day which I will link in the description goodbye my dudes